Hi Foxy friends, this is Sarah from Foxy's Domestic Side and this is the birthday girl. I made these lawn signs for the birthday girl. And that I, is correct! I went online to see if I could rent some lawn signs and I found out that they are a hundred plus dollars to rent for 24 hours. So I thought that I would make them myself. So I went online, there were no tutorials out there, so I'm going to show you how I made this birthday sign for the birthday girl. Come along with me as I show you how I do this. Thanks for watching. Please enjoy this video. So the first thing you want to do when you're making your yard sign is to figure out how tall you want the letters. There are so many yard signs out there in different varying heights and widths and all the above. So what I decided is that I knew that I was going to put it on my front lawn. I decided how big I wanted the letters. At first I thought I wanted the letters to only be 18 inches and then when I went outside and held up my ruler that's 18 inches, I realized, oh that's kind of small, I want it bigger and more grandiose. So that's how I ended up with 23 and a half ish inches. Because the Cricut mat can only cut up to 23 and a half, I made sure that I wasn't gonna have to have four pieces. I only wanted it to be two halves so that it was gonna be a lot easier to stitch together on the corrugated plastic. I decided to go with 23 and a half and then however wide it needed to be to make it look right. Each letter is definitely is like 23.47 inches high. Correlating width is whatever the letter is. So like the P is not gonna be, is gonna be wider than I, for example. Just decide what size you want before you do any printing. Um, when I first bought the vinyl, I kind of had in my head that it was gonna be 18 inches, not realizing that I wanted 24 inches and I miscalculated, so I ended up having to order more vinyl. Just figure that it's gonna take about four feet of um, vinyl per letter, because mostly. Because let's say for the H, for example, you're gonna have the whole H, and then you're gonna have half of it be 23 inches and the other half is 23 inches to make a full H, which is now almost four feet. Just kind of calculate that out. I think in my head I wasn't calculating out that there was gonna be two halves. So make sure that you calculate that there's gonna be two halves when you order your vinyl. Sometimes you could kind of piece together the second half of like the two P's onto one depending on what color scheme you wanted. It only worked out I think once or twice for me that it was the same color and I could use the other half. These are the things you're going to need. I'm filming this on corrugated plastic. Um, it helps if you have a long ruler. This is a quilting ruler. Straight edge is gonna help you cut the corrugated plastic easier. A squeegee, a box cutter of some sort, and H bracket. And I will leave a link to everything that I have down below. And then I previous I cut out all of my letters already. So I have all of these letters. This is my Cricut Design Space for the happy birthday. There's a little bit, a few letters up here. Because the letters that I was doing are different colors, I put the like letters with the same colors just so it was easier for me to print. That's the only reason I did it this way. Um, also the files are pretty big, so I just decided for ease of how fast Cricut was processing, that I would just put like letters together. So if you're, all your letters are the same, you might just want to split it up so that it makes the file size smaller. So I did this birthday sign for my daughter. I'm going to show you how I'm gonna do it for my son because I already have the happy birthday. I just need to write his name out, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. It's called a Bigger Than Matt Cricut Project. So right now, I'm going to write the C. So C. All right, and the font I used is called All Star Font. I got it on Defont. All Star Font. All right, so now this is the part where you want to make sure that you're in the parameters for the height of what will cut on your Cricut mat, because you only want it to cut in two sections. So I know that I want this the height to be no more than 23 and a half in height. So you can, I'm scrolling out, this is as large as it gets. So this is how big it is. And so what you wanna do to get the two sides is go to your shapes over here, and pick a square, the square will pop up over here. You kind of move it. I wanna take off the block and then I wanna make this bigger than the shape but I don't want to exceed 11 and a half on the width because that's my max that I can go. 
So I'll make it somewhere around here, 11.4, just to, it's almost 11.4. So you can see where that is. I wanna kinda get some, so when you're placing this to cut it into two halves, obviously this letter is not wider than 24 inches, so I can put this basically anywhere I want to help me so that when you put both sides together, it's the easiest. Because if I put it like this, it might be a little easier, but I feel like having just this post, just trying to connect these two things and they're smaller is easier for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. And you're gonna use the same amount of vinyl really because you can't really reuse it. So what you do here is you go select both of them over here like this. And then down here, there's a slice function. So you click the slice. What that does is it slices it. So you wanna get rid of the box now, delete that. There's an extra layer on here, so you delete that. And I can change this to black, just so it matches. And now you have two halves. And then you wanna make sure that you, oh, that these are, these are one piece. If you wanna save on vinyl, you can definitely make these two pieces and lay them down separate. I just found it just as easy to lay them down as one. So it doesn't matter how you cut it, but if you wanna save on vinyl, which I might do, because I'm kinda of running out of vinyl. <laughs> Um, I'll probably do this in two sections. That's how you do the C. I'm just gonna finish his name up, but that's how I did everything in Cricut. I just did each letter like this. I created the letter, I made the size that I wanted, and then I sliced it so that there was two halves so that I will print one this side on in one go and then this side on the other go. Let's continue on our tutorial. I've now done about 12 letters, so I feel like I have a better grasp on how to do this part so that you get less bubbles. Okay, so we're gonna start with the contact paper. I use contact paper from, you can use Dollar Tree, this is from Target just because that's where I was when I bought it. And so I, this is already used. I used this last night, but it's pretty new. Um, I found that I could get probably like three-ish letters per before it kind of started getting all crumpled. So. What you wanna do is turn it to the sticky side down and then attach it to your counter or whatever you're putting it on. So rub it down right here and then I flip it over. You're gonna lay your letter down like this and then I kind of start it and I kind of roll it down so it doesn't get any bubbles. Cause I find if you get the, if the bubbles are on the contact paper when you put it down, they will show up when you put it on the corrugated plastic. So I've kind of pushed it down a little. This letter E is a little bit harder because um, it's there's so much of it. So there's a little few bubbles here. So you really wanna make sure that this side is stuck down. Um, Cause that's gonna really help you so you can use your scraper and really get it down. So then I use my scraper like this, and I scrape down, trying to do it evenly. I think it would work even better if I had a bigger scraper. Sometimes the contact paper gets ahead of me. So you see how it kind of made a little bubble? So I peel it back and I do it again. So try and get this as smooth as possible before putting it on the corrugated plastic. It works so much better. So there's a few bubbles that you try and work out if you can. If you can't, you know, you can't avoid bubbles altogether. So um, it's just, it's not possible, I've tried. Because even when I did this part perfect, I still got bubbles on my letter. Okay, so now that this is pretty bubble free, as you can see, I'm gonna bring it up and then we're going to take it outside. So you wanna, I've been labeling them because it's two sheets for each. Okay. I'm gonna peel this off. So here's the letters. This is kind of the part that's a little tricky because you kind of have to guess. Um, nothing is gonna be perfect. So I kind of just try and line it up so that it's straight here on an edge and straight here on an edge so I don't have to cut all the sides. 
So try and get one edge lined up. You don't have too many tries, so once you kind of put it down, you have to put it down. I have been successful in getting it up. Um, but the first couple were definitely, you could tell. You saw my first one that I did. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down. Got my squeegee. Um, this kind of laid down a bit, so we're just trying, oh. All right, so it's down. And we're just gonna do that same thing with the squeegee. Hope for the best. Just kind of let it lay where it goes and it works out pretty nice. Sometimes you can like squeegee out the bubbles, but. other part of this letter is a letter B. So I have the other part of this. So we're going to, like I said before, attach this to whatever surface you're doing, using. You wanna try and get it as straight as possible and as tight as possible so you don't have any bubbles in the middle. Fold it over. Push this in. This. down a little bit just to get really stuck. I'm gonna lift up, lift it up, smooth it out. I already have a bubble. I'm gonna peel it back a little. Kind of crinkle this a bit. This is the hard part, lining this stuff up. This is also one of those things where you just have to trust it and stick it down and hope for the best. Especially since I'm lining up three things. Okay, I'm gonna try and do it maybe this way first. Try and get it lined up here. I'm just gonna do it and hope for the best. She can literally be here forever if you don't just do it, you know? As long as it touches it, I'm happy. That worked out. There's a few bubbles. Pretty good alignment though. All right, do you see that there's like tiny little bubbles right there? These are tiny, so they're not too big of a deal. But if you slit it in the direction that the corrugated plastic is, it hides it a lot better, I've noticed. So if you slit it in the direction of the corrugated plastic, and honestly, you can't see anything when you put it outside from like far away. Yeah, there's one right here. It's kind of a bigger one. And you just slice it in the direction of the corrugated plastic. So there's all these little tiny ones and I probably wouldn't bother with those, you know? There's a really big one, one over here. And if you just slice it in the direction of the corrugated plastic, it goes away. It's best if you cut out all of your vinyl so that on the corrugated plastic, you can maximize your space. So you can do, if you have two Y's, you can do the Y's one right side up and one upside down. Or if you have different letter, like two P's, you can do them upside down into each other so that you can maximize your space on your corrugated plastic because it's not expensive, but it's not super cheap either. So you wanna maximize your space. Uh, what I thought I was going to need I didn't need as much because I didn't take into account that I would be able to kind of piece them together like Tetris. That worked out really well, but you always want to buy more than enough so that you don't run out and have to rent out to Home Depot or order something from Amazon last minute because that's the worst when you get into a groove of a project and you don't have enough stuff. Okay, we are day of the birthday 
and I wanted to give you some tips that I realized as I was putting these signs together. These ones right here, um, the, H bra the H stakes, are 18 inches, and then I ended up buying some 30 inch ones, and then these little tiny eight inch ones, because um, her name, Bella, is gonna be in the front, and then birthday is gonna be in the middle, and then the happy is gonna be at the top, and so I wanted them to be tiered so that you can see them. Um, I did realize that these H stakes have this little thing right here where the letter will rest on, so you wanna make sure that all those are at the same level. That being said, I realized the R and the A and the birthday, the A and the H, um, these are only five inches apart, so they were not going to fit in here, so I had to add the um, center back into the R. Take that into consideration when you are making your letters. And then this Y, I originally was gonna use those five inch ones, but I had to buy these 30 inch ones, which was 10 inches across, so I had to add the outsides. And you can see that I've just taped on the other side of them to attach the center. Luckily I had the center still, so I kept every all the scraps. All right, so let's lay these out in the grass and set it up. This is the H that I did at the very beginning and it was kind of crooked and I had a whole bunch of mistakes, but when it's on the sign, you can't really tell from far away. So don't worry about the small stuff. So that is how I made the lawn signs. I know it looks hard, but once you get the first couple done, it goes a lot faster and you kind of find your groove and how you how the vinyl works best with your corrugated plastic. I know it took me a few letters. Um, I did film the very first letter that I did, which was the R, H, something like that. But I did not. I decided not to show you just because it was just a hot mess and I found a better way to do it. Um, towards maybe the fifth or sixth letter, I figured out a better way to get the vinyl to stick onto the transfer paper. So I didn't show you the first letter, so I might have referred to it a couple times, but I did not actually show it to you if that first letter. It was just like a hot mess. Um, the letters were all bubbly and there was just like a lot of bubbles. I ended up not doing it again and you saw in that last clip that you can't see it from far away. So it just looks, you feel like it's, the, when you do the letters, you feel like they're all bubbly and they don't look good. But when you step back, you can't really see those bubbles and you can't see the little slits that you made to kind of smooth down the bubbles. So don't worry about it. It's gonna be, it's gonna look great if you put it on your lawn. People are never gonna be closer to it than 20, 30 feet away. So uh, no one ever sees it. And even that very first, the first couple of letters that I did, there was a lot of bubbles and I kind of just had to go through with my X-Acto knife and kind of flatten the bubbles a little bit. You can still kind of see it, but you know what? It turned out great in the end. And the most important thing is that my daughter loved it. She was so shocked. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I know that this video is kind of long and I tried to fit everything into one video instead of making it two videos. So there might be some things that I missed that I didn't realize that I missed. So let me know down below. I'll answer all the questions that you have. Whatever sign you do decide to make, have fun with it. Make sure you give yourself a couple weeks. I gave myself two or three weeks to finish this. So I wasn't doing all this work because happy birthday Bella was a lot of letters to have to do. So I broke it up into three days, I think, and it worked out great. I never got fatigued about doing the letter. So it never became one of these things like, oh, I don't want to do it. 
So just make sure you space it out, have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I love my sign. It's beautiful, and it's everything I ever dreamed. Even more than that. Goodbye.